we talk about that um, because that is where uh, in partnering with um, body bullying, uh, physical abuse, uh, sexual abuse, all of those things and how those impact how we feel about our bodies and what we see in the mirror. The special needs body um, such as health challenges such as cancer, PCOS, lupus, things of that nature that um, touch our hair, our skin, um, our weight, our breast, things like that, that can also affect how we feel. People that I want to feel like they, their story is being understood and their journey with their body is being understood. And because I have experienced all three of those things myself, and maybe when you ask why Ivy, that's what I needed to address. Vila Artista. Thank you, Ivy, for being here. Hello. Thank, Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course, of course. So I want to dive right in, as I said, Ivy. I believe, as we were just talking about before, that there is such a tremendous need for the work that you are doing both personally and now publicly. Talk to us a little bit about what Sea Body Love Self is and why Sea Body Love Self is. Okay. See body love self is very simple. It's about seeing your body exactly how it is right now and totally embracing love for your body and yourself. Mm. And um, that seems simple, <laughs> but it's something that can be complex. Uh, the reason for it is because I wanted to invite people to really stop letting other people and external things define their own relationship with their body. So it's an invitation to begin your own healthy love relationship with your body. Yeah, yeah. An invitation to begin your own healthy love relationship with your body. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I, when I think about that, Ivy, and I, I connect that very much, as you know, with life design, because it's this idea that how we define ourselves is so important in terms of how we show up both for ourselves in the mirror and for everybody around us, both the people we love and the ones that we couldn't care less about, but they matter whether they're at our job or whatever. Right. When you design, when you define who you are, right, when, when you're connected to that definition, whether it's good or bad, it affects everything. And so in your work, really focusing on what it means to have that connection of self-love and body image, it really helps, in my mind's eye, to shape the definition of who you are. Right yeah. and how you're showing up, um, you're nodding, and so I'm taking that to mean that is the case for you. So can yeah. you tell me a little bit about how Ivy defines Ivy and as it relates to Sea Body Love Self? One thing about Sea Body Love Self is that it is about my journey, and it's still a journey for me. It's it's something that I'm doing right now, and I'm learning. Uh, uh, um, I'm learning how to love my body, um, be forgiving and not judgmental of myself. And that is the foundation for the other choices that I'm making in life. Mm -hmm. So whether it be business, whether it be health, fitness, relationships, um, sexual health choices, all of those things are founded in my relationship with my body and mm -hmm. how I feel about myself. And I think that sometimes we go in the wrong order we put business we put trying to get fit first trying to get to a certain size trying to establish certain relationships or networks with people when we really need to establish our relationships with ourselves and our bodies first mm -hmm. and let that love for ourselves emanate outward into those other choices that we're making in our lives yeah who is it for you it's about you and it's about your journey but how are we part of that it started as my journey and definitely um, connecting with the Life Design Agency really helped me to connect that journey with my purpose mm -hmm. um, because the journey started a long time ago for me and that's something that I'm realizing even in launching Sea Body Love Self is that this has been evolving over a long time. This is my life story and my journey. And so I see Sea Body Love Self as an invitation 
for other people to join the journey because mm-hmm. my journey's been going on, but now it's saying, hey, I want to invite other people to join me on this journey and to provide them with the education, uh, the empowerment, and the enlightenment to start own a body love journey because what I learned in my life is that there were resources that I didn't have. Mm-hmm. Uh, like when I started on this journey, I didn't have a life design agency or some place like that to really help me connect the dots. Mm-hmm. So that's what this is about. Um, it's for any woman. It's not, I am a curvy woman, I'm a plus size woman. But what I know about body love is that we all have things that we're working on. Yes. Learning to embrace about our bodies. Yes. So it's for women who are dealing with maybe being too short, too tall, uh, skin tone, raised hair, uh, being too skinny. All those things that we look in the mirror and we judge ourselves about, it's yeah. about wanting to release those things. Wow. That's a tall order because when I think about, um, you know, one of the things for me, and I'm a part of the Sea Body Love Self Facebook group, of course, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> um, and one of the things that I know your work helps me come to terms with over and over again because it's constantly a journey is how my body changed after I became a mom Mm. right so with each pregnancy I gained at least 50 pounds like yo pancakes Mm -hmm. onion rings like all the yummies and then when I was able to lose the weight of course I had stretch marks Mm -hmm. and so for me it was like okay that's not sexy Mm -mm. it's over you know like that sort of thing and even though I worked out and got myself back to the the space where I looked good on the outside whenever it came to something like a bathing suit or even just looking at myself in the mirror I would look at that part of my body and go "Hmm." even if there was like a six pack with the stretch marks Mm -hmm. and so when I think about the work like the uphill and the inside work that I had to do to get there it feels heavy it feels like a lot how can one woman help us face that sort of thing, Ivy? What what will the community that you're galvanizing both online and in person, what will that community help us to do outside of the general lofty goal of feeling good about our bodies? It's definitely, I see it as about learning to rewrite the script, right? Because mm-hmm. we've taken other people's scripts <laughs> and started incorporating into what we tell ourselves. And so it's about giving a new script, um, giving people education about, you know, how to, how to learn how to define ourselves in a different way. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as education, it's about learning that judgment of ourselves and judgments of others are things that we've learned over time that they're not necessarily natural things. Mm -hmm. We've learned to look at a person who is maybe skinny and fit and has it all together and think that, okay, they must be eating right, they must be working out, they must be a person who's motivated and inspired. And, you know, making those prejudgments about that person, just like we make judgments about people who are overweight. Yeah. So it's educating and saying, okay, let's let go of judging people by the outside and let's let go of allowing other people to make those judgments of us. And let's really redefine the script about what we're saying about ourselves and what we're saying about others. So as we go along, it's really a lot of it is about education and reframing our minds and our thoughts. Yeah, and that's going to be so helpful because I know from personal experience, I definitely was one of those women. I shared that with you Mm -hmm. and a few of my other friends. And like my friends from high school know this. Um, I definitely was one of those people who said, okay, if you're overweight, and I wouldn't say overweight, I would say fat. If you're fat, then it Mm -hmm. means that you just need to eat less and exercise more. It is not that complicated. Mm-hmm. That that's definitely how I viewed anybody around me that was overweight. Mm-hmm. It was a matter of uh, lack of motivation, all the opposites of the things that you would say of a, a typical thin person, right? Because even even in college, even when we were doing um, courses in preparation for interviews and internships, and they'd talk about body language and nonverbals and all these things, and they would say, um, as an overweight person, like that's something that you are at a a deficit that's one of like the strikes against you going into an interview yeah particularly for a woman yes right so 
all of a sudden there's this stigma that because you're overweight, then you're weak. You, you're not disciplined, you're not whatever, and conversely, as you mentioned, if you're slim or just not overweight, then you must have it all together or you're motivated or disciplined or whatever. And I believed that. I did, because it seemed that simple to me that, well, if I'm not fat and I eat good things and I know I need to exercise, then why is she fat or why is he fat? Meanwhile, there are all these other things that are um, medical, medical mm -hmm. things that people don't even get diagnosed for, things that people still don't understand, how you're raised, you know, like your things that are outside of not your control, but your knowledge base. Like right. things that, that how I grew up that I thought were the standard, they're not the standard. And so right. through that education, through being friends with you, learning about your journey, um, having other clients who struggled with body issues as well, and friends who st um, struggled with body issues, I began to connect the dots. I began to realize that it had nothing to do with that. Yes, in some cases, that's what's going on. But that making that judgment is the same thing as saying, I don't know, because a person is whatever color than this or a certain race than that. It's, it's all in the same space of ignorance, really, just lack right. of knowledge. And so what I love, and I'm asking the questions in some regard as if I don't know, but I do know, which is why you're on, I know that SBLS is very much about helping us to educate ourselves for other, but also for self. Because when you recognize that for you, Maybe this weight issue is not because you're not exercising enough or you're not disciplined. Maybe there are medical things that are going on. Maybe it's a matter of a certain food or foods that's making you bloated or slowing certain things down. Those are realities as well. Right. And that for some people, the motivation is tied to the medical part. So if you don't know what's going on and you have tried and it didn't make a difference, then of course you're not going to keep trying because it feels like for what? So it's an emotional struggle, but we often don't mention or focus on the emotional part, especially if you're not overweight. Then you have the luxury of saying, honey, I, I had 15 pounds to lose and I worked it out, you know, because that's how I always viewed it. So this is what is so important, too, about SBLS. You get to learn. You get to not be ignorant, basically, mm -hmm. like what happened to me. You get to not be ignorant about that particular Thing and realize that it's tied to so many other things. So I want to talk a little bit, Ivy, about your personal journey. Like sure. why you in particular are equipped, as you so much are, to do this SBLS work. Tell us why, Ivy. Because I have been that person, like you said, that's been judged. I judged myself and I was judged by others. Yeah. Um, one of the things that you mentioned was that if you don't have the education or the information, you really can get in this rut where you don't make the changes in your life. Um, for example, you know, I'm a curvy woman. I have had uh, issues with trying to lose weight for a year, just a back and forth struggle. And it was something that I was looking down on myself for and saying, well, why can't I just do it? Yeah. You know, you watch these reality shows where people go on there and they just magically <laughs> lose like these 200 pounds yeah. because they have the motivation and they have the inspiration. And people are always sending messages and saying, if you can just get yourself together, you can do it. Along the way, as I began to educate myself about what was really going on with my body, as I began to go to um, the doctors as I begin to do research and find out more about, okay, there might be more than just what I'm eating or, or what I'm not doing. Because I was a vegetarian for five years and I was working out, but I, I was losing some weight, but I was never seeing a significant weight loss. Mm. And so it was really hard because people would look at me and when I would say, Oh, I'm a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for five years. I will always get that, you know. Right, because <laughs> vegetarians are supposed to be okay. stick figure granola eating yoga instructors. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was true. And so in me digging deeper and really, really connecting and saying, okay, what what's going on? I found out more information about my health and, you know, why I was not able to get to a smaller size. And so from there... Um, even now in launching Sea Body Love Self, there's definitely a message out there, um, healthy at every size. 
And that is a really important message that mm. it's not about your size, that you can be fit and healthy at any size, small, large. It's really about having a healthy lifestyle. Mm. And those lifestyle decisions are made from your love relationship with your body. Mm. Um, I recently started a dance class um, and I was so scared to go to that dance class because I felt like I was going to be judged and I felt like people were going to look at me and say, okay, she needs to lose weight before she even starts this dance class. And I felt like everyone there was going to be smaller than me. And I think that's a great example of what people go through when it does come to even getting up and getting into having a healthy lifestyle. It, well, I have people say this all the time. When I lose the weight, I will. Yes. You know, when I lose the weight, then I'll take swim lessons because I don't want to be in a bathing suit until I get smaller. Mm-hmm. When I lose the weight, then I'll take yoga. You know, when I lose the weight, then I'll go scuba diving. So, you know, it's something or vice versa. You know, um, when I you know, feel a little bit better about my body or gain weight, some people feel like they're underweight, yep. you know, and I'll go out and buy that dress. It's like we punish ourselves mm-hmm. and so- ourselves and allowing ourselves to you know experience life and that's what I really again want to invite people is to live life be healthy at every size embrace your body let that be the foundation for the healthy relation the healthy I'm sorry the healthy choices that we make yeah yeah and so when when I think about being healthy at every size I want to ask that question because it's coming up in my mind and so I imagine it's coming up in some of your minds as well watching and listening can you be healthy at every size that's definitely something that I I am becoming newly educated about Mm -hmm. there's lots of scientific information out there that is saying that weight is not necessarily relative to health Mm -hmm. Um, you know that being a certain weight is not an indicator of how healthy you are and that is one of the biggest messages that I really want to get out there um, either way skinny yeah. it does just because you're a size two yeah does not mean you're healthy and there are people out there that are I even had a friend that I lost to heart disease um, and they were very small but they were not eating they were not exercising they were not you know making healthy choices and so just because your body is small does not necessarily mean that you're healthy and conversely, and, if your body is bigger, so right. but we do know that there are health issues that are attributed primarily to excess weight, and this yes. is why. And and I bring this up because it's important. So when this is why SBLS is different because it's not a weight loss uh, motivational group, and and I want to be really clear about that, right, Ivy? It's it's not about right. weight loss. It's about body image and acceptance and celebration. And in some cases, healing. And sometimes that healing is about gaining some weight in a healthy way or losing some weight in a healthy way. That Mm -hmm. one's more the the norm, but they both exist. And the fact that you're creating a space where we can get this sort of education, we can learn that there are um, statistics and research out there that are telling you that because someone, I know this for a fact, because I know people who are bigger than I am who could run circles around me if we're talking about cardio or who might be more flexible than I am at, you know whatever the thing is so we know that but the guilt that comes from not even just my knowledge but that person like you said feeling nervous about going into that classroom or um, feeling nervous about going to the beach or feeling nervous about whatever that thing is and then taking that emotional stress that comes with that anxiety and then pouring it right back into their body in a poisonous way or into their relationships with friends and families that's what SBLS helps you to resolve and heal right not yes. just about what your body looks like but how you feel in your body exactly and it's the foundation for other issues as well not just weight like i mean even for example as an african american woman natural hair you know, I mean, look at the journey that 
our our community has made when it comes to how we would judge yes. natural hair or how we judge women with weave. Yep. So I mean, even that type of issue, you know, you people are quick to say, Oh, well if you're if you have weave, you don't really love yourself and you don't <laughs> you're not really, you know, connected with your roots and the bottom line is that you can't look at a person and judge them. You don't know why that person has weave. I have a friend who um actually just won the battle with the cancer mm. and she had the weaves and wigs we can't judge her journey we don't know what's underneath that wig or yeah. why she has on that wig or what her story is yeah and what SB, that's why SBLS is so important to me because it's to stop the judgment of people by what they look like on the outside and, and what they have going on on the outside and to really release judgment again of ourselves and of others and to start really embracing ourselves. And when we do that, when we stop judging ourselves, we also release that judgment of others so much. Absolutely. Deep. Yeah, because the energy now, that judgment energy just feels ugh. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. And so I feel, I feel like I still don't have enough information about Ivy. Like, sure. So I know that I know what's good mm -hmm. in terms of why you're <laughs> equipped. And one of the things I want to point out, too, is also that um, you're a makeup artist. And that artistry, too, is very much judged as surface, you know, like putting on makeup. You, there are still people who are like, you shouldn't wear makeup because then you don't love your natural stuff. Yeah. Bye, first of all. Um, but, it, but when you do that work, and I know you've been doing that work for several years, when you do that, you also get to see people in such vulnerable spaces where it's like, you know, cover this, cover that. You know, I have like little hairs that grow on my face and then I put concealer if I'm trying to be extra cute, you know, like little things like that, that show up. You've been in that space with women for a very long time and the style of makeup artistry that you do. I'm particularly curious about because it focuses on enhancing natural beauty and right. not, you know, not necessarily covering, but more so enhancing. Yes, there's coverage needs and all of that, I'm sure, but enhancing natural beauty and, and helping a woman to say, no, look, look at your face and here's what we're going to bring out, mm -hmm. not here's what we're going to cover up. And it's that mindset of expression versus hiding that I think is, is a part of the core of what you do in anything, you in particular, your writing, SBLS, Refresh. So I know that as SBLS evolves, see body, love, self, get with it, SBLS. As SBLS evolves, I think the educational component is going to be such a critical thing. I feel like you'll end up working with organizations, not just women one-on-one, -on -one, because there's such a shift that needs to happen, such a large paradigm shift that needs to happen with the difference in expressing versus hiding. Mm -hmm. You know, this again, presenting versus being present, not saying that you need to accept yourself if you're 7,000 pounds or that you should accept yourself if you're seven pounds. Health, wellness, peace, being at peace with where you are in your journey and then doing what you need to do to heal that self. That's what I know about SBLS. Would you echo that sentiment, Ivy? Definitely. Um, again, that healthy love relationship with yourself and your body is what motivates you to connect with and present the very best you, mm. whatever that is. And so that includes, you know, health, fitness, whether it be your appearance, because when you love yourself, you want to present yourself at your very best. Mm -hmm. Not as anything other than yourself, but the very best you. And that's what that's about when it comes to makeup. It's the same thing when it comes to putting on clothes and dressing. Like you said, it's self-expression. Yeah. It's going out and feeling great about yourself and saying, you know, hey, I put on this green today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it makes me feel good. Yes. You know, um, not because... I'm trying to look like anyone else or not, not because I'm trying to hide anything, but because like you said, I'm expressing Ivy. I'm expressing myself and mm -hmm. I'm expressing what I'm feeling inside, which is love, life, living. And so when I'm going out, that's how I choose to present me. Yeah. And it works for you. <laughs> how did you get there, Ivy? Or how are you getting there? Because I know, as you always say, it's still a journey. It um, is. How did you get there? You know, I've asked you this question in, in different versions because 
as women struggle, particularly with the, the focus on what we look like on the outside, whether that's our hair or our bodies or our skin color, whatever, there's so much work to be done around that. And I know that there are a lot of women in those spaces, again, not just necessarily with weight, who just cannot deal. Like they, they are maybe defensive you know, understandably, again, not just about weight, but all elements of what this temple looks like. You know, what, what did you say about my hair? Or she's looking at me because I have locks. I bet I would have got that job if I had locks or if I was skinnier or bigger, I had a bigger booty or bigger breasts, you know, whatever that thing is, it's so difficult to get past that when you're focusing on yourself. How did you get past that? Or how are you getting past that? Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> that one makes me take a pause because I mean, yeah, it's like so many, so many different messages that are being sent to us. Um, you know, it, it really is a step by step process because even when, like, say, when I'm getting ready to like film a video like this, there are certain things that go through my head when I'm looking in the mirror. And it's what are people going to think? You know, um, I have this scar, I have this small, or I have these imperfections or whatever. Those things still come to me and they're still things that I deal with. And there still are things that I feel the pressure to cover up. Yeah. Because, of course, I have not arrived. It's still, like I said, it's still a journey. Um, but it has been something that's been definitely step by step. Um, like for me, it did, it started with my hair. It started with my natural hair journey. Mm. Um, I was definitely revolicious. Back then. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping and on my I, face so that my... With weave. Yeah. I mean, weave is great. <laughs> but here's the difference. Weave for me then made me feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. it, find beauty for Ivy mm -hmm. and without it when I took it off and I looked in the mirror I just didn't feel like I was as pretty I didn't feel like I was as desirable or as fabulous um now I would definitely still be in a heartbeat yeah. but it's a different reason for me it's another it's a, a choice it's another way to express myself okay I want to do the fair faucet look next week because yeah. it's just how I'm feeling, yep. but it's not defining me. I can go without it and still feel beautiful. You know, I can do the the little bush on the top, and I'm good to go, and yeah. I'm feeling great about myself. I think that's the difference. The choice, um, making right. that choice, and and the 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 meat inside that choice. Because I definitely get what you're saying with whether it made you feel beautiful before, and that being the issue. And I think a lot of the people who are so anti anything but natural hair, mm -hmm. that's what I would, if you're that person and you're watching, let me talk to you directly. That's what I would encourage you to consider the reality that for everybody, it isn't about trying to get away from their Africanness or their blackness or whatever. I get it. I'm natural hair all day, myself, my daughters, for our reasons. But those are our reasons. It right. doesn't mean that whatever reasons you wore weave before, uh, they're the same reasons that somebody else wore a weave before. So somebody else might have never had that that inclination to say it made me feel beautiful in the past. Right. And and that's some, it's just a matter of a look. For some people, it is just a look. Right. Right. Let me <clears throat> definitely have a naked moment. You know, I have my naked. Yeah. <laughs> naked blogging. T M. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I started um, taking this dance, my dance classes that I'm taking now, which mm -hmm. I'm so excited about because it's. It's a fitness, a way of fitness that I enjoy. And so I would go into dance class and I would do these hour dance classes. And then the next morning I would get on the scale Yeah. and it would be, okay, how much, how many calories, how much did that help me lose? How mm -hmm. much weight did I lose from that? Mm -hmm. And I would get on the scale and I would have gained weight and it would crush me mm -hmm. because it would be, you know, I went to these dance classes. I danced my mm -hmm. ass off yeah, yeah. for an hour and I gained weight. And so then there would be this guilt around, well, what did I eat? Well, did I drink enough water? Well, what didn't I do? And, you know, it's all these checklists that started happening. And so when I learned to release that and really in, in working through the Sea Body Love stuff, again, it's my journey too. Now I go to class, I come back, and it's like I'm 
refuse to get on a scale because to be about enjoying the fitness, like yeah. you said, enjoying the moment, living a healthy life, making healthy lifestyles. I'm sorry, making healthy choices and yeah. having a healthy lifestyle. And my body is going to be healthy along the way as long as I'm making healthy choices. It's just going to happen naturally. And it might not happen with a size change, you know. And so that is the difference is really being motivated about loving yourself and making those choices, not because you're trying to alter yourself, not because you're trying to meet a certain beauty standard or a, a social standard, but really just living life to the fullest yeah. and and really releasing those pressures. And the, like you said, that heavy burden of, of trying to measure up to some type of number, be it on a scale be it a height, be it having hair that's a certain <laughs> a certain yeah. length. There's so many burdens on us that we can really release um, mm -hmm. and just really start to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. So what if someone wants to change? What if is see body love self for the woman who wants to figure out how to gain 15 pounds in all the right places or, you know, lose a certain amount of weight or... Or the woman who says, you know what, I am we delicious, but I don't want to be. But I just don't understand how you could feel cute with stringy lock thingies or, you know, a big puff, whatever. Is it for the woman who actually wants to change? And when you say what want to change, you mean the woman who really does want to alter her her. Yeah, like if she is focused on wanting to be 50 pounds lighter or she is focused on um, wanting to release her connection to weaves or she has natural hair but she wants to feel confident wearing a weave like if somebody does want to change something is there space for them or not so much in this particular space I don't know it's about your motives it really is about your motives mm. Um, you know, if that feels like you loving on your body, if that is about you loving on your body, is that if that is a way that you're showing love to your body, I'd say that that's coming from a healthy place. Okay. If that is about how you're allowing external things to define you and make you feel about yourself, then I feel that that's coming from an unhealthy place. Okay. If that decision that I have to lose these 50 pounds because I want to look like so and so who was on the awards mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, you know, that again, that's body comparison. Mm. That's body comparison. So it's not about that. It isn't about compare and contrast. And I you had you used this term one time, Ivy, when we were doing a session and it was a body bully. You were talking about being a body bully not just someone else being that but you being a body bully to yourself like any of us doing that and as you know that stuck out for me that i i mean i was floored by that idea because in, in my work I, I talk all the time about being a bully to yourself like knowing how you are and knowing that if you're the type of person that you don't respond to being bullied yet you're constantly trying to force yourself to do things you won't get it you won't attain that goal and you tied it in with your body being a body bully can you talk to us a little bit about what that means and how we could start to see or maybe just assess whether we are being body bullies to our own selves yeah definitely I feel like the example I just gave about what I I was doing to myself mm -hmm. that's a perfect example of you know I was at a dance class I was giving my all I was, you know, dancing for an hour and then I come home and put myself on a scale. That is body bullying. And the way that I really think about it is if you could step outside of yourself, look at yourself as a child, would you ever do that to a child? Like, would you take a child, let them go out there, do sports or do a dance class and then come home and say, okay, now you get on the scale and you see how much weight you lost. That seems crazy. Like, that seems so mean. It's yes. Cool, right? Yes. But we do, we do it to ourselves and we feel like it's okay. And I think that's a really good way of looking at it. Like I've really started stepping outside of myself and looking at myself and saying, what what are you doing to yourself? Would you do that to someone else or yeah. would you do that to a child? To a child, yeah. yeah. If you can answer that question and say no, then it's body bullying. Mm, you know, I, 
I talk about the little girl self a lot, a seven-year-old girl in particular, because I think for many of us, that's um, we can remember some elements of that stage of our life, you know, somewhere around six or seven. Mm -hmm. And the level of compassion that we have, mm -hmm. particularly for a little girl, I think as the little girl gets older, we start to make her responsible for more of what's going on outside than where she's coming from inside. And as I do that work, as I do a lot of that little girl work, um, I realize how that body bullying and how that mental, emotional bullying has been showing up. And that same assessment that you use to say, you know what, look at yourself as a little girl or think of your little girl or a little girl that you've been around or loved or liked or whatever, would you say that to her? And if right. you can't comfortably say, yes, unequivocally, I would. Right. Pause. Pause and make that assessment. And these are the type of simple assessments that SVLS will help you to make on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. This is just one example. I encourage you guys to log on to Facebook. Um, all the links are below uh, as well as in the post itself. We want you to connect, particularly on the Facebook page right now, because we're creating a community. And I say we because I'm like Ivy's biggest cheerleader. Um, we're creating a community of people who are, I wouldn't even say bold, because you don't have to be bold. You just have to be committed to wanting a better experience for yourself. Yeah. You want a better experience for yourself, and it starts with you inside and your temple that body, a lot of times, is a mirror for what's going on on the inside, many times, from crown to the tip of your toe. And so what we're saying is when you get together in this space, we're going to help you to get tools to express that, to heal that. Ivy is being very candid about her own journey. We didn't get into the details, but she will. Um, you'll get to see her own mental transformations from the space of any sort of guilt or or shame or fear to a full acceptance of that lifestyle she wants and then whatever happens with her body is just a beautiful side effect of embracing that beautiful lifestyle and that is the purpose in a nutshell of SBLS live fully and then have the side effects show up right exactly, exactly. yeah so you can see why I was so excited to have Ivy on because nobody's talking about this. Everybody's talking about either changing yourself or loving yourself as you are. And I feel like SBLS is a beautiful mesh of both, not in the sense of changing who you are, but what happens to you as you're going through the process of, of healing and getting to that best version of yourself and giving you things that you can do to be that best version today. Like not when you gain or when you lose or when you whatever, but now, right? Yeah. Like in yeah. a moment by moment basis. Yeah. Who's doing that, Ivy? Nobody. Well, you now. So <laughs> thank you so much. We are definitely going to be talking more with Ivy. Um, I'm personally and professionally invested in what Ivy is doing because it, it means so much to me to see somebody be willing to own the space that they were divinely placed in and be open about it you know this ivy i'm so proud of you i'm so excited for you i'm so grateful for what you do um and i'm really grateful for you allowing me to be in that space with you i feel like we can have a separate conversation about um our work together because i really want this to focus on what sbls is and why ivy so we'll leave that there but Stay tuned, guys, because there's lots more to come. And in the meantime, look below if you're on executmama.com or the lower third here and um, connect, okay, and share it. Spread the message as well. Ivy, any last words? I just want to say join the journey. This is definitely a we thing. It's not just a me thing. Um, we're doing this together. This is about supporting each other. And I'm so happy to have you even considering this journey and know that it begins with you today, right now, when you make the decision. Yes, today, today, today. today. It's not when you get there. You're <laughs> already there, all right? And you're going, 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 and you have support now in that going, going, going. Thank exactly. you, Ivy. 
Thank you all for watching. As always, I appreciate your attention. If you have not subscribed to ExecuMama.com, hello, do that, please. <laughs> all right, peace.